Hey there, scientist Amanda here at the Kentucky Science Center with another Do Science at Home moment. Today, we are talking about mandalas and symmetry. Now, symmetry is any time you can draw an invisible line through the middle of something, and the images on either side are perfect reflections. So the human face is a great example of symmetry. If you were to draw a line down the middle of our face, we have two eyes in roughly the same position, two eyebrows, ears, nose, you get it. Um, so you can look around you and see what kind of symmetry you can find. Now there's more than one kind of symmetry though. That's what we call bilateral, which means it has two sides to it. If we look around in nature, we can see that, but we can also see something called circular symmetry. If we were to take these images and chop them up in any pattern following these lines out, they would be very similar. So we also have things like the starfish. All of its legs are very, um, very similar. So you could draw lines through it like this, kind of like the piece, pieces of pizza. And then a lime is another great example of radial symmetry. Now, we can actually look at these for inspiration to create art. There are Tibetan monks who for thousands of years have created these immense mandalas. Now these mandalas are a way to meditate and to just focus on one thing at a time. They took images from nature and natural objects and combined them together to create art that also helps us to focus. So what I did over here, I went around and found some objects that I thought were interesting and laid them out in a mandala pattern. Mandalas are usually circular and they start at a center point and kind of radiate outwards. Um, it's really fun to see how big of one you can make and what kind of um, natural items you can find. I think it would be a lot of fun to go up to one tree and make a mandala just with stuff you find on that, using the bark and the leaves if it has flowers or, um, or fruit would be a great way to do that. I have a few more examples of some things that mandalas other people have made using natural objects. It can be as simple or as complex as you would like it to be. Now these Tibetan monks, while they look to nature uh, for inspiration and they use nature in their things, one of the most common resources that they use is colored sand. We're just using regular sand today. And I just have a piece of paper I'm using. It's folded up so that I can control where it goes. And you can also create a mandala using sand. Now these Tibetan monks, like I said before, they use this as a form of meditation. They put all of their energy into creating these immense pieces of work with extremely intricate designs. Be a little more precise than what you're seeing here. But as they do this, they're focusing only on the design, things that bring them peace. And at the end, when they're completely done with it, it's just sand. It's not permanent that they're pouring their energy into. So all, what they'll do is they'll just sweep it away. And with that, they, they find peace. They can get rid of their frustration. If you're having a bad day, making a mandala is a great way to get over that. It's a uniquely human way to cope with stress. So make some mandalas, find some interesting pieces of nature, and share your creations with us on social media. We'll see you next time.